Hello, my friends, and welcome to MB Shoe Doc, where we take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. We will be covering the art of patina and shine and learn to breathe new life into old shoes. So grab your dyes and polishes and get ready to get your hands dirty, and let's dive right into today's project. All right, all right. New patina project here. A pair of Allen Edmonds. Really, these are look to be just about brand new. It's a little bit of a crease here, like maybe they've been tried on once, walked uh, in store once, perhaps. But this really looks to be brand new. Very nice looking. But I think the client is board with the walnut color. He probably has a few walnut colored shoes, so he's wanting something a little bit different. We're going to go with an oxblood patina. So, we will start by stripping these guys down. Little cotton ball, fancy dishwashing gloves. to strip the factory finish on this. You can see the color coming off. Luckily the Allen Edmonds Walnut is generally a, a fairly easy shoe to strip. Usually strips pretty cleanly, pretty quickly, and predictably. Probably one of my favorite uh, shoes to work on for doing patina. The leather uh, takes the dye well, and it's such a light color to begin with. You can kind of do anything you want with it uh, color-wise. So yeah, it just really works, works well, lends itself well to patina work. Just to show you the difference, so this one here obviously been stripped. This one is the way it started. So now I just look to get this one stripped to match, and then we'll get to the fun part, adding some color. Got both shoes stripped now. So this is where the, the fun begins, adding in some color. So starting with the Fibings Oxblood. And what I like to do, I like to dip the brush wipe off the excess on the lip and then usually do a little dab on the cotton ball too. I don't like the uh, brush to be super oversaturated. And when I'm doing the, the burnishing, um, usually I will just not even dip the brush into the actual dye, but just use a little bit that's left in the cap. Now for this base coat, I do go a little bit thicker, but still I don't like it over saturated. I'll also tell you this, this first coat, you know, when it goes on at first, it's going to look fairly dark but it's going to lighten quite a bit. As this dries, it won't be as, as dark red. It'll look kind of pinkish, typically. Usually it's going to take a few, a few coats to get it covered well. So this is after that first coat. And you see it's not going to be a perfectly even finish. It's kind of streaky. Typically with the second coat, uh, that'll help to even up some of that. But we'll go ahead and get a coat on this one. All right, so this dye has sat for a little bit. I'm going to switch over to the Angelus. I 
or using the same method where I dip it into the dye and then typically kind of dab off the uh, brush just a bit. And to show you the difference, so this one's had the fibings and then the angelus. This is just uh, one layer of fibing, so it does kind of darken up and changes the tone just a little bit. So once again, we'll get the other one to match it. Now the dye has sat for overnight. I'm going to use Bic 4. This is to recondition the leather, and it'll remove any of the surface dye that has not absorbed. gives us a better idea of what the true color is uh, because some of the dye that kind of dries on the surface leaves a sheen to it it's hard to see the true color so sometimes it ends up being lighter than you thought sometimes a little darker than you thought so you really have to kind of wipe these things down and then reassess what you've got The color looks pretty similar, but this one's been reconditioned, so maybe it looks just a touch darker compared to this. We'll get them both wiped off, and um, then as usually, uh, I'll, I'll start adding some burnishing, kind of darken in a few key areas. All right, the dry, uh, the dye is set, and it's been reconditioned, reconditioned the leather. So now it's time to add some burnishing using the Angelus Black. Now for this, typically what I do is just try to get a little bit of dye into the cap here. Kind of dab off the brush. Because this is not, um, you don't want a very saturated brush. So this is more like shading, like you would do with chalk, something like that, more so than it is kind of painting like you would uh, with the first few layers in the base layer. You can kind of see how it kind of gradually adds in uh, a little bit of shading. Go a little heavier along the, the broguing. And along the base, tend to go a little bit heavier there too. But beyond that, I like to be kind of a gradual fade. You just get a little darker on the buckle tip there. So you can see the difference. This one's got the darker burnishing added compared to this one without it. Now, once I uh, use the conditioning lotion and rehydrate again, it'll kind of soften the edges a little bit so it blends in just slightly better. Uh, but I think that looks uh, pretty good for now. So go ahead and get the other one to match and then we'll recondition both. I decided to add a little bit more uh, dye work, so I did a uh, custom mix of black and oxblood. It was about a 50-50 mix, 
and this is just to and kind of blend the edges a little bit. Again, want to use somewhat of kind of dabbing the brush off, drying it off a little. And I'm just going to kind of lightly go along all the edges. Really, just for fun here, decided I'm going to go ahead and do a little custom work on the sole. And really, all I'm doing here is using some of the Ivings Oxblood, but then I also dipped it into that uh, Oxblood and Black mix and just trying to make a little bit of a streaked pattern here. We'll see how that looks when it dries. But hopefully that'll give us something a little bit interesting. And again, just for fun, first few steps, of course, we're going to you know, remove uh, some of that off the sole, but it's kind of a nice little touch. Yeah, so I think that looked pretty cool right there. After sitting overnight, these are looking pretty good. Happy with the uh, little bit of patina look to the sole there. Now really it's time to recondition these one more time using the Bic 4. So getting that surface dye off reveals what the true color is. And then we'll be able to assess do we need to adjust the dye anywhere. I will also mention that I went around the uh, sole edge as well with the dye. Um, it was the factory sole edge was kind of a light uh, tan brown really didn't go well I didn't feel with the black cherry patina so I did go over that a couple rounds with the dye I lightly sanded it first and then just went around it very simple so yeah looking real good we'll get the other one wiped off and then we're ready to shine them up Hermes Red here. I'm doing just a very light coating of this in a few areas. I'll do it on the toe here. And really, this is just kind of smoothing the edges, the transition of the dark to the light. It's also filling in It'll, any uh, little scuff scrapes, scratches, things like that. And it just helps to build a, a better mirror shine at the end. to start the shine using Saphir Mirror Gloss in Neutral. I really just tend to concentrate on the toe and heel area. 
put a few layers on by hand. Gives us a nice uh, base coat. And then we'll introduce a cloth here in a bit. Now, something I'll point out, this one's uh, pair has not really been worn. I don't know where it's going to crease. Uh, I can see maybe just a little bit of a crease. This is a longer toe cap on this pair, so probably I'm not going to mirror shine all the way up to the cap line. I'm going to go a little bit uh, in front of that. I hate to do a, a perfect mirror shine on the entire toe cap, and then the client wears these for the first time, and it cracks right across the edge here. So it's better to go a little more conservative and keep that mirror shine just on the toe, and that's what I'm going to do. It's time to add the cloth. So usually dampen this thing up a little bit. Just get a little bit of wax on there. Single drop of water on the toe. And then we'll start to buff this. Again, for right now, I'm kind of going over the entire toe, but at some point, I'm really going to concentrate just on the toe tip. I don't want to get a, a full mirror shine all the way up. Like I said, I don't know where this pair is going to crease, but I can see a little bit of a, a line here, and I can really see this thing creasing just slightly in front of the cap. And this is basically how the process goes. I mean, it's just going to be, at this point, just time. Adding a little bit of wax, buffing it, and keep on going back to it until it shines up uh, to an appropriate level. And, you know, this can take 30, 40 minutes, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't film the entire process. I usually pick back up after uh, it's taken on a little bit more of a shine. And I do the same thing on the heels. You know, same thing with a little drop of water, and I'll probably do maybe about a third, spend about a third of the amount of time on the, the heel area. I do like to get a decent shine on it, but um, I don't go for a full mirror on the heel. And I've already started, but uh, I'm going to put some, some more wax on the sole as well. Now this is, again, not necessary. There's not really... Uh, a functional benefit to this. This is all cosmetic. So, you know, I put that little bit of a interesting patina on here. And so I'm just shining that up and that's just a little, a little something fun and extra for the client. All right, so I think we've got these just about ready to rock. Pretty thrilled with this outcome. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this patina. So yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share with all your shoe-loving friends. See you on the next one. More to come.